For how many years has the hockey world said that the Toronto Maple Leafs are soft? I mean, even superstars around the league have made it well known that the Leafs need to change the way they play. But whether or not you believe that is the problem to their lack of success, new management is making one thing very clear to the NHL. The Leafs will not be bullied by anyone and will be a completely different team to play against. Well, at least that's the hope. After taking some heat from Leaf fans on day one of free agency, new GM Brad Treliving went to work by signing both Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi to one-year deals. So far, the Leafs have added four players in this offseason. Domi, Bertuzzi, Ryan Reeves, and John Klingberg. I'll summarize what this means for the team in one sentence. The Leafs got better offensively, worse defensively, and drastically more annoying to play against. Offensively, Bertuzzi, Klingberg, and Domi will all fit nicely into the Leafs system. However, if you're into the analytics of the game, all four of the new players are considered defensive liabilities. So that's not great, but what the Leafs are really trying to do with these moves is change their identity without changing their top stars. The Leafs want to be tougher to play against, so they brought in the toughest guy in the NHL in Reeves and some talented pests in Bertuzzi and Domi. Far too many times, this team has been criticized and mocked for backing down or not standing up for themselves when the situation calls for it. It may be silly, but these little psychological battles are what gives teams the mental edge in the playoffs. If you know you can ragdoll or take advantage of another team's top player with no pushback from the superstar or his teammates, you instantly have the advantage. Bringing in guys like Domi, Reeves, and Bertuzzi will not only handle their own in these situations, but they will go out of their way to initiate it. This is something the Leafs sorely need. Now, in theory, this is all great. Bring in some grit, defend your stars, and they all play a little bit taller with a little more confidence. But the Leafs have tried this in the past, and it obviously hasn't worked. So why is that? Well, it's because it takes more than three guys to change the DNA of an entire team. No matter who the Leafs bring in, it won't mean much if the leaders of the team aren't willing to do what it takes to win. Ovi called this way back in 2019, saying the Leafs need to play differently if they want to win. Now that may seem outdated, but the same four leaders in Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and Tavares were all still there. Even Conn Smythe winner Jonathan Marcheseau went on spin chicklets shortly after this season and said virtually the same thing when talking about the Leafs. Like they get past the first round and after they lose in five against a team that I think was they, they were hot at the right time, obviously. But I mean, I don't I don't know. Like it's it's a, it's it's hard for me to see. There's a lot of things that needs to change if they want to win. The Leafs reputation is well documented around the league. When you make these moves to shake up the culture of the room, it has to be contagious. It has to leak into every player's game, especially your best players. In order for the Leafs to take the next step, it starts with their four best players doing what it takes to win, even if it's far outside their comfort zone. And I'm not talking about these guys dropping the gloves, by the way. It just means adding the necessary details that is required to win in the playoffs. Whether it's skating through checks, winning 50-50 battles, and making the right play instead of the risky play, it's all the cliches you've heard, but it's true for this group. We've seen flashes of this in the first round against Tampa, only for it to vanish in the Florida series. Your leaders have to lead by example every single night. Take Sidney Crosby or Nathan McKinnon. Generational skill, yet they're willing to play a heavy game to win, and they do it without hesitation, and naturally, it's become second nature to their game. It takes time to learn how to win in the playoffs, and the Leafs stars have gotten better at it over the years, but it's obviously still not good enough. Bringing in these players is a good start for the Leafs. It sends a message to the NHL that playing Toronto won't be easy, but more importantly, it should send a message to the Leafs and their leaders that the current standard and culture needs a change. As of right now, the Leafs are trying to send that message without changing any of their core leaders. And while that may be a controversial decision by many who want massive change for the organization, it's something that should be very intriguing to watch play out.
So we are very, very early in the NHL offseason, so there's probably a lot more moves to come for Toronto. But what do you think of these moves so far for Toronto? What do you think needs to change in order for the Leafs to have way more playoff success? Let me know in the comments down below. And before we end the video, I want to thank our sponsor, Hockey Training. If you're a hockey player who wants to improve your game, the Hockey Training app and YouTube channel is the best place to be. Armed with drills inspired by some of the greatest NHL players in the world, it is the number one spot to take your game to the next level, both on and off the ice for this offseason. If you're interested, I'll leave the links in the bio down below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more NHL breakdowns, make sure you hit that subscribe button.